Hi, it's Jocelyn. So this time of year has been a lot for me, so I haven't been able to upload for the past few days, but here is Advent of Code Day 24. Um, oops. Arithmetic logic unit. Oh, we're building a computer. Look at that. <laughs> I was wondering when we do that. I guess the answer is the second to last day. Um... Okay. What is the largest model? Okay, so this seems like more complicated than we can just run by building computers. So, okay. So, so we have a computer which does a bunch of stuff. Um, so it, there's just probably one IMP here. Oh no, there's multiple IMPs. Um, Fourteen digit model number that contains no zero digits. So that's a lot of that's a lot of inputs. Okay, I think what I'm gonna build, I think what I'm gonna do is build it and start seeing which ones are valid. We can also maybe start from like a bunch of nines and go down. Um, I'm not sure, but like figuring out, yeah, we might, we might also need to figure out what this does. Um, but in any case, we can build computers. So let's do that. And then we'll see where that takes us. So an instruction can be input, which writes the variable a, can be add, which adds the value of a to the value of b. Um, and those can either be, so the second one needs to be, um, so the first one needs to be a register, the second one could be a register for a value. Um, and then we have multiply, which I think is the same thing. We have divide, we have mod, we have equal. Okay. And we need something that, okay. And the output is whatever value is in Z. Okay, so. These are all W, X, Y, or Z, um, which I think we can just, since it's all W, X, Y, and Z, I think just makes it a bit faster, we can represent this by a U size, 
which would be zero for W and so on. And we'll represent our registers like in a um, in a four uh, an array of length four. So lots of possibilities here. Before we go too much further, um, okay. I want to try. I want to see if we can. Hmm. I want to see if we can simplify this a little bit. So we have add, and then we have some stuff, and then we have some other stuff. Um, so this will just be equal to that, plus equals. Just trying to make this a little bit easier to understand. Um, for multiply, that's this. Or equal that is you have to value the inner be equal um, then we have divide And finally, mod. Okay, and that should be everything. So now what we care about is anything that happens to Z. Um, I can also, just because I think this is going to take too long. So, like it is a truly giant number. So I want to see if there's any hints or what Z is going to look like. So y here is equal to w plus 7 times x. So these are not independent. Um, because
yeah, these are not independent um, because we add z to x here. I'm not seeing any crazy hints here. Um, though maybe there are some only so many states that um, we'll do something clever for sure, but maybe there are only so many states that our computer can be in. Oh yeah, actually there are only so many states our computer can be in. Um, cause only four registers that does help. Yeah. Okay. So we'll do some memoization. This is going to be fine. Um, but first of all, I have to make a need to make a computer. Um, Here we just have a useful function to um, get the register if we need to. Um, this way we don't have to have special case all of these. And that's going to return I64. So yeah, one thing I noticed in this is that it, there does, like because of the modulos, I think that we're going to keep all the numbers fairly small, um, which will lead to potential for memoization. Um, just like that. So this is a v size is equal to reg a um, plus b dot to val with our registers. Um, and these are going to look very similar. Right, of course. We need to remember to also do this. And sure, well, if we can do these things, why not? Anyway, now we need to parse that. So we're just going to split once on a space. Um, we could split three times, but um, we'll just split again in all of the input, like in all of the cases. Mm, actually, no. I'm going to do this. the instruction which is parts.next.unwrap we have the register which is parts.next.2 
there like a two char or like we do? Yeah, let's try parse. Let's see that says char. And then we'll have the second value, which is equal to this. It might there might not be any. Um, but if there is something, then this is mm, yeah, here we go. A dot parse as a I sixty four unwrap or um which or value uh, register a dot parse dot unwrap. Actually, we should probably do upper else in this case. So we're saying try to parse it as a um, number, and if that doesn't work, parse it as a character. Mm, this is a little bit convoluted. Let me try this again. Okay. A dot parse as an I64. I'm gonna map that to a reg or val val A. And if we don't get that, then we're going to parse it as a register. Possibly. Good, that's an option read your bell as we expected. Okay, so now we're going to do match instruction bench e value. So it can be several things. So it could be input, then the register, and we don't care what this is. Actually, we do, it has to be none. Um, then that is instruction input okay it can also be add and this will be some B I'm just going to call this a here make sure this compiles. Right, okay. Um, so we're going to say if it is W, then it'll be zero. I forgot that we're doing this. X, Y, Z. There, that's better.
I'll make a function which does this. Wonderful. And now it's panicking here just because we don't have all the instructions. So multiply, divide, mod, and equal. All right. So Now we can make our computer, so program is equal to vec new, and we're going to insert this. Okay, so if we were being naive, we'd try all the numbers. That is not going to work, um, but let's run it just on, let's run it on ones. Um, on one number. Just gonna do this at first because we'll need to like pause and whatnot. Okay, so let's try, let's just try this. Um, she is that okay? That's gonna fit. So we had inputs here. I'm just instead gonna call this a single. Mm. Okay, I don't think we actually need a back deck here. We could use a single I-64 since they're single digits, but for now we'll just do this. There are 14. Yeah, there are 14 of those, okay. Here's what's in Z, so that's the fourth one, so register three. Okay. Oh. I'll fix that in a second. So we're pushing to the end here. Um, the first thing we pop is the first digit, which is what we'd expect. Um, so that that's correct. 
and we get an answer here that's actually huge which is alarming because I was thinking that I was thinking that we'd only have so many states So I was saying that X is modulo 26 and I was hopeful about that. Hmm. Those are really big. just to make sure you read the entire input. Okay, let's see how many, I wanna to try to figure out how many states the um, this thing can be in. So a state will be defined as the registers plus the program counter. And if we're at a state we've been at before, then we don't need to investigate that anymore. Um, So that plus the program counter. Um, we'll just call it is new. This really does need to be its own function. Okay. So PC is a program counter that the um, index that we're at will have our registers, which is these sites four, and then we'll have our visited list of visited states, which is a hash set of those two things. And this will return the answer once we are done, which will be a vector of, what's it called? A vector of I-64s. OK, 
Okay, this input instruction is interesting. Um, because I think we don't want to generate them all at first, we'll want to generate, we'll want to state what the next one is. And we only to split, we only to split the best function on those inputs. We don't need to store the other visited states. Okay. Yeah, we'll just do that. Okay, so. Did I get that syntax right or is it backwards? Alright, that looks good. If they got okay, so if it matches that, um, otherwise, is the very first instruction input okay? Yeah. We'll just assert that when we get to this function, the first one is an input. Um, and now we're going to say for input in one, two, nine inclusive, we're going to try that. We actually can just do an I-64, as we'll see in a second. Um, we actually want to go, can we do like reverse, is that a thing? I'll go from nine to one. And we might get nothing. And actually this needs to be a hash map to the answer. It's like it's the memo, of course. Okay. Um Okay, how do we do this? So we're going to run the first instruction. Um, I'm going to 
shadow these, run the first instruction, which is the input. And then we're going to get the next instruction while we can. Until we get to the best. for the next input rather. When we get to the next input, we're gonna call best again. If we get something, then we're going to return it. Um, Otherwise, we're going to continue. Okay. And then when we're done, we're going to... Um, if we got here, then we can add this. We can say visited.insert um, reg pc. That is all going to have a value of some best. And if we get to the end without finding anything, then that is also useful. Um, okay. Now the victory condition. Okay, so that's best times 10 plus instruction. If we get there. If we get to the end of the program, then if the last register is zero, then we can um, record this. Okay, that's a lot, but maybe this is okay. Let's see what our errors are. Oh, we actually need to run the program. That would help. Um... This also needs to be I-64. And if we get all the way to the end, we need to return none. Yep, that's right. Oh, plus input. Wonderful, and of course this doesn't work. Um, so we want to return best, which has the program, the program counter which starts at zero, registers all start at zero, visited starts with an empty hash map, 
and that's it. Let's see how this works. So it finished quickly, which is good, and it panicked with, but it panicked with an empty, oh, panicked while parsing? Uh, what's that about? just didn't work through this clearly enough. And otherwise, we do that. That's a good point. Okay, and now we're just not getting an answer. Um, Still very fast, um, which probably means we're doing something wrong. Um, but I'm curious what our memo looks like. How far down does it go? Does it get to? Two thirty four is the last one. This number is going to be backwards, but I'll fix that. So it's cloning the program registers, cloning this. Um, oh.
yeah, if we didn't get something, it doesn't mean there's nothing. It just means that we don't have the answer yet. Let's see if this has any hope. Oh, we got an answer. Okay. Um, so looking at this, I think that our answer is reversed because we're taking, yeah, we're taking the last character or we're taking everything I got so far, multiplying it by 10 and adding the next input. And so the one after that will append to that. So this, this will just be reversed. Okay, the answer is not nine. I promise you that. Um, Okay, and just while I'm at this, we'll do I guess we have to do, okay, chars dot Rev dot collect into a string dot parse dot unwrap. That just reverses the number. Hopefully this works. Um, tell from the runtime here that we're really pushing it and we um, like I doubt this would have been as efficient with a different data structure that number looks really high um, also we saw that the last digit was a nine so that's correct Let's see how that goes I got the right answer I achieved rank 44 I am on the leaderboard okay continue the part two um, smallest number. Okay. Oof, that's crazy. Um, okay, I'm just going to do the smallest instead of largest. We'll pass this to best. I'm glad I got on the leaderboard once. Um, yeah, let's see if we can do it twice. Okay. So 
So if it's the smallest, then it's something, and otherwise it's what we have. If it's the smallest, then it's um, just one to nine. Okay. What's this complaining about? Probably that was a dot. Okay. I feel stupid, but I don't know how to make those the same type. <laughs> Somebody in the comments can tell me. I'm just going to read in the solve since it does both parts. Okay, and we have an answer, uh, which I guess I should show you. We have an answer. I'm going to paste that, and we're done. Rank 40. All right, thanks for watching.